Do you remember the animated film of Inside Out? Well, in that film, we see memories depicted as these little glass orbs of different colors that are like stacked up in these library-like shelves. Don't remember? Well, here, let's bring it up. Four years of piano lessons. Yeah, it looks pretty faded. You know what? Save chopsticks and heart and soul, get rid of the rest. All right, U.S. presidents, what do you think? Yeah, just keep Washington, Lincoln, and the fab one. Forget them! Hey, you can't throw those away! Those but in reality, what are memories? Are they really little pieces of like glass orbs? Are there really perhaps shelves with glass orbs with different labels like perhaps that time I accidentally picked the wrong classroom? Well, let's find out. First of all, let us define memory. What is memory? Memory is learning that has persisted over time. It is information that has been stored and, in many cases, can be recalled. Memory is a wide range of phenomena, from recalling how a word is spelled to remembering your birthday party. There are two kinds of memory, namely short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory only lasts to up about 30 seconds and is also called working memory. Working memory is defined as conscious active processing of incoming auditory and visual spatial information. Long-term memory is basically anything your brain retains after 30 seconds. Long-term memory is divided into two classifications, explicit and implicit memories. Explicit memories are defined as memory of facts and experiences that one can consciously know and declare. Implicit memory, however, is defined as retention independent of conscious recollection. It compromises on memories that you don't have to consciously recall. Let's give examples. For explicit memories, think of you remembering the name of your teacher or remembering the name of the country you live in. Let's give examples for explicit memories. Um, let's take perhaps how you brush your teeth, how you hold a fork, how to breathe. Those are the implicit memories. On to the next segment. How are memories for? When you experience something, watch me do this. Woo! Bam! That's in your memory now. The experience is then converted into a pulse of electrical energy that zips along a network of neurons. Information first lands in the short-term memory veshi and it either decays or gets transferred into the long-term memory after 30 seconds through areas such as the hippocampus! Yay to the hippocampus! Don't lose that thing, folks, or you'll be begun memory. On to the next segment of our program! Where are memories stored? When we experience or see something, Article 1, watch me do this. Bam! That's in your memory now. Your brain then picks a bunch of cells to store the memory of what you experience and it will activate them all at the same time. But, mi amigo, those cells aren't all in the same place because different parts of the brain specialize in different things. Your brain picks cells across those different regions to store different aspects of a memory. For example, the visual cortex will store the memory of what you were seeing, while the amygdala will store the memory of how you were feeling. It really hurts! <laughs> this whole complex process is called the engram, which is defined as the unique pattern of cells activating together across the brain that makes a memory. On to the last segment of our program. How are memories forgotten? Wait, I think I forgot. Joke! Okay, okay. We humans are able to remember a lot, but we forget even more. So forgetting just happens, but our brain can also forget on purpose. 
we have at least three different ways of forgetting. The first one is when a memory fades over time, which is called passive obsolescence. The second one happens at night while we sleep. This is when our brain clears out the random and useless tidbits of information that we don't need called targeted forgetting. The third one is when a person intentionally suppresses unpleasant memories. This is needed in different situations like when you experience something traumatic. This is called motivated forgetting. Forgetting can be bad, like for example in a test, but it can also be good. Memories are very important because they make us who we are. It connects our past to our present. We should cherish this thing that our brains could do because we don't know when our memories will fail us. Hope you guys enjoy learning memories with me? This is me signing out. Capiche and have a very memorable day!